Hey, howdy everyone. Uh, Terry here again from Treetop Woodworking. And uh, just figured I'd get a little bit of this. I'm starting on some uh, more of my flutes that I've been making. Uh, Native American flutes. Um, these are going to be A's. Here, see. No, these are going to be G's. So I need like 7 eighths inch diameter on the inside hole uh, to make it come out right. And uh, that's what we're going to be working on today. I don't have my um, my blanks. I just have to route them out here. And uh, what I'll be using, I just took this off as a roundover bit. This I used on an inch one. This is a big roundover bit. But uh, be using is a uh, not that one because it's old. I've sharpened that in a few times and it's ready to be thrown over the hill. <laughs> but I might use it for something later on. This here is a brand spanking new one. That's three quarter of an inch. And uh, I'm making a seven eight eighth inch hole. So we have to set it where we do it and we flip the thing around and, and um, run our blank through and it gets the other side too. You gotta allow for that. But we'll talk more about that here in a minute. You got to get your spacing right between this and the back to cut out the right right size hole. And you got to allow, like, uh, this needs to be 7 eighths round. So you got to get the right depth, too, to cut the hole. And uh, 7 eighths, what would that be? Um, 7 sixteenths on each side would come out to 7 eighths, wouldn't it? And... Uh, that's what we'll be trying to hit first. We'll cut that there as the depth. But uh, we'll get that done in a minute. And this is a, you know this router, it's a, it's a cobalt router. It's got like a two or three horse router on it. Really powerful. It's one of the most powerful ones for this size. And the price was killer. And this is not only takes a uh, half inch, uh, deal here but it also takes the smaller one also so it takes both of them and that's a really good deal and a router these here are there's some other aggravating things that can aggravate you about it though the how it raises up and down i usually work it with my finger and wiggle it move it up and down and things like that instead of using the uh, this deal here i'd much rather have had a socket and a good deal with probably most of them's like this too they get sawdust in the threads and you got a booger with them and Y'all probably know that, but uh, I'm going to get my blanks out here and mark them, and I'll, I'll let you see some of that, too. Okay, I grabbed a couple flute blanks here. Let's see what I got here. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but... I got a one with a line under it. And I have a one on this side. That way I don't get them mixed up. I got like nine of these. With 14 pieces of wood, but two of them make a blank, which will be glued together after they're routed out. And I tried to keep them together because they was cut from one another. That means they'll meet, meet up in the middle. Um, but anyway, what I was going to show you too. This one's got a line under it. I try to look at the grain and pick out which one I think will be the prettiest to be turned up the, the upper side of the flute where your flute holes are going to be and the way it's going to be turned most of the time, and even the sides. And this bottom piece, it's uh, marked up too, and it will be pretty, but I think this side here will be a little bit better. But, you know, so of course, I, I put a line there the side I'm going to be turning up. And this, the nice thing about this router, and I'm not advertising this router, no one's paying me to, but uh, it has measurements. I don't know if you can see them all along through here in inches. And what I do, line both ends up. Usually four inches is good. And I'll go up 
up an inch to five inches. Mark that. That's all I have to mark on that. Uh, and what this will be, when I route it out, I'll come along. When I get to that mark, I'll lift it up and I'll go over and go back down. That way this remains solid, except for a little track that's cut in to let the air come in this way. Go through the rest of the flute. Mark my other one. Right here. Same way. Got two little line under uh, it's gonna be something else there's some real pretty stuff going on down here now, a little bit of this will be gone what my laid clamps to uh, but most of this from here I don't know if it'll be, be saved and usually all you need for a G would be like 20 inches from 21 inches from one end to the other. I got almost 24 um, because I waste a little bit here and I cut some off. And, um, and actually, for these, you don't wouldn't need that much, but I make mine a little different. I, I, I drill tuning holes in instead of just cutting it off. I cut it off maybe right in here, but I drill tuning holes. Instead of making the end of the flute here, I make it here and do tuning holes here. But let me mark this one. I don't know if I'm making any sense to get that one wrong. And again, you could mark yours at three inches. Four inches, five inches, but you got to have a certain length to come out here for whatever flute, uh, tune the flute you're making. So if it was a, a D, you need a longer flute. And, uh, if it was an A, I told them, hey, you need a shorter flute. It all depends. Same way with the diameter of it. If it's a, a D base flute, you'd have to have like an inch, inch and a eighth hole inside diameter. If it's like an A, um, like three quarters of an inch. But this G will be, uh, this G will be, again, seven eighths. And a G and an F sharp and an E are about all the same in that in that aspect. They're all seven eighths of an inch. But you get the D's and that moves on up to the inch. And you get down to a high tone A and it moves down to three quarters of an inch. And I got these marked. Let me get the rest of them. I got seven more to mark. Before I start rallying. Well, we got her set. We're getting on both sides. I had a testing piece. I always like to have a testing piece. About uh, 7 sixteenths, which will give us 7 eighths when we're done. It's going to take 7 sixteenths. The depth will be, and the width is right on 7 eighths. Won't you? Do one side and turn around and do the other side. But we'll give her a run here.
Now we have a seven eighths inch hole. It's gonna make some good flutes. Of course, we gotta glue it together, sand the inside out a little bit, put it on a lathe and sand the outside and tune her up. <laughs> but I got a bunch more to do, so I'm gonna finish these up. five more to do reason to stop because I want to check and make sure these routers you have them at a certain depth but after a while it seems like that depth goes down a little bit sometimes not all the time but sometimes looks like I still got a pretty good hole there Let's see what we got we got an inch and seven eighths looking good. That is good. You see that router try to snatch it out of my hand and drag my hand in there? Tell you what, this is one of the most dangerous things ever was. But uh, I'm going to get done with what I'm going to do in here and I'll get back with you. one I got in a hurry. <laughs> Need to go to the restroom is what it is and I got in a hurry. But every time you get in a hurry you mess up. You see what I did here? Now, this is where I had it marked. When I get to the middle of the thing with this I'm supposed to stop up and drop it down and get this side on out. It looks like I went all the way through. To it. <laughs> but I go about right here and realize what I've done. I had to draw me some lines and Go from this side over, which would work. It's not the way I had planned, though. Hopefully, though, the face of them will meet up pretty good, and it looks like it's going to be okay. But uh, let's check our hole one more time and see what we got. Surprising, I don't think. It moved in this round. Cause I still got, still got just a hair over seven eighths. Or 
Try on that mace. That is good. And of course, stayed said mace the other way too. But that's good. But, uh, and these here, you see, these are an inch and a half across this way. It gives me a good quarter inch on both sides. I like to have a quarter inch. Another boy, he, he does it with an eighth of an inch, but he's a lot better at it than I am. I like to have a quarter myself. So I'm using an inch and a half and I'm getting a quarter on each side and set mace in the middle. Now, and this is F, this is a G, which is the same as the F sharps and uh, um, the E's. Um, I believe we're all three set mace inside but if you go to a base d now they're an inch and i did it with an inch and a half before but i'd rather have an inch and three quarters give me plenty of room on the outside edge to work with because you're not left with much i i'm not anyway have about an eighth on each side i guess maybe a hair over we're all done with these see i still gotta probably go through and Drill my holes next. I usually drill them right on my line. Actually, I turn them over and I drill through here, about right in here. And same on the other side. I'll leave this gap here. But uh, we'll drill the holes and then we'll glue it together. Well, first we'll drill the holes and I'll come through and burn it and sanding it a little bit if it needs it in some places. And then we'll glue it together. But uh, I'll get back with you when I'm drilling them holes and uh, burning the insides out soon. So here we are. We have our inside diameter out where we want it. Got about a quarter of an inch on both sides, something glue to some good uh, real estate to glue to. We have a hole that's set mace around this way and this way. And we got our length we need. I got extra length because I make mine different. I got almost 23 inches all together, but I got four inches from here to this first line which will be my hole I drill for the air to come in and up through the track and back down here and through the flute and my tuning hose usually the flute would be usually the flute would be about this long but I'm, I take mine out this long so I'm going to that's going to be my tuning hose somewhere in this area here but uh, what I'm going to do, <laughs> this is the one I messed up on. <laughs> That's why I've got these lines here too. <laughs> but anyway, you see what's going to happen here when you glue them together. But what I'll do first is drill the holes. And again, I find the one that's going to be the top one, which is supposed to be this one because it's got a number eight on it and got a line through it. So this is the top, and this is where the hose. You only put hose in one side, about right in here. And I'm using probably a sixteenth, sixteenth of an inch drill bit. Try to get right in the center. Right where it starts to curl up almost. And I can then tell my battery is about dead. <laughs> Get down and look something like that with the hose here. 
I could have got this a little hair up a little further, but I didn't. But it'll be okay. Because that's about the right distance if you want between there. Somewhere between a half inch to an inch. Anywhere there's kind of fine, you know. Some people have it maybe a couple inches long. I don't know. But see what's going to happen. These will be together. The air will come up through this hole. And again, there's going to be a track here and a block over top of it. And the air will travel through that track and it will split. It'll be a, the splitting edge will be in front here of this hole. And some of the air will go in and some of the air will go over. It will hit that splitting edge and make your sound. So what I'll do is I'll drill these out. Then I'll come back through and if I need any sanding, I'll do that and then I'll burn these out a little bit. I'll show you that in a minute too. My battery holds that. I may have to go... I'll get these done and get right back with you. Well, now I've got them drilled out. And this is what it should look like. Lined up pretty good. There's one of them I was trying to show y'all and wasn't paying good enough attention. Look at this in here. And this is what you don't want to do. Get one here and then get this other plumb over here. You want them in line with one another. Of course, I can take my burner and I can hold it over here and, and I can hold that one over there and straighten it up. But it's nice to get them straight as you can to start off with. Straighter than this, anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to look for the ones that need sanding on a little bit. I think most of them come out actually pretty good. Pretty good. And even though it looked like my router bit was struggling, which it was because I was cutting out a good depth all at once. I was cutting out almost a half inch. <laughs> it was seven sixteenths. You really don't want to cut no more than that at one time. And that's like, uh, really these turned out good. And see, they make, like someone say, well, why don't you just get a seven-eighths inch router bit and eat that whole lot all at once? Well, for my smaller router, it would be so hard on it. Um, and it's got one of the more powerful uh, routers on I think it's three horse. That's pretty powerful for a uh, little tabletop router, <laughs> like mine anyway. Yeah, looks like they all turned out pretty good. I see really a lot of burrs. Not much sanding needs done, don't look like. Seems like I've seen one or two of them in a gold that might, but not seeing it now. And of course, if you did have any trouble, you know, if you had your, you got a bandsaw, and, I mean, this stuff's really good to clean one up cleaned up fast, you could even bend it up and get right there and, and go in between here and get anything you need. Most of the time I have to do that, but these here really, really as you can see, they routed out really good. 
That had to do with a, a good router bit, even though it looked like it was struggling. I might hit this in a little bit. Just a little bit like right that. Goes a long, long way. It really turned out smooth, but yeah. The next thing we'll do, burn the insides of them out just a little. And what this done, what this does, I'm told, not only does it get rid of the burrs and stuff around that might be left over or whatever, and, and there'll also be one more sanding when we get all done, but it hardens the wood 10 to 15 percent is what I hear, and it, it um, hardens it up to, so it closes up all the pores a little bit more. Uh, Keep any bacteria or any kind of uh, anything that get in that would damage the wood itself. It helps to protect it that way. And once you get your oil and you, and you can go ahead and wax the inside of it too beforehand. But I do oil it a couple of different times. But uh, I heard someone, some of some people, one boy he used to wax his, but you got to watch doing that. It could turn it out to be too high. Of um, the tuning could go too high on you, I guess. But uh, as long as you get it good like this, like this one here is ready to glue. We could glue her up and I've got a thing I can stick in it later and do any sanding if I need to once I get all the holes drilled and burn out. But uh, this is good right now. And not a lot of people do this step. But I know one boy that does and he makes real good flutes so that's what I'm going to do too. But I'm going to get off here and get the rest of these done. Got them all burnt out. I think we're going to do... Get them glued up here. That's got a small hell hole in it. 
Here it goes. Get the... I may have to get off here and fix that first before I glue it up. See, this is the worst one. This is the one I want to do first. This is the worst one because it's not lining up very good. You see, of course, this is the one I messed up. I turned around so it's not going to line up exactly. But I'm going to have to do some little different clamping on it to try to get closer to right. But it's got this hole. Yeah. Take some super glue and fill it up and put some sawdust. I'll be right back with you. In just a minute. Well, we've got nine of them burned out, sanded, ready to glue up. And, uh, We'll start with the worst one first, the one I messed up. They don't go together too good. I'll have to use more claps on this one. Because it lines up on the ends, but in the middle, you can see, it's way over. I'm going to have to squeeze it over and try to straighten it out the best I can. And hopefully, it'll make a good fruit. But don't know, but we're going to try it anyway. And my glue... Getting old or something, and it won't come out of the deal very good. I just have to wipe it on with my finger. i squeeze some out here. Maybe that's got it. Just get a little bit more. 
straightens her out the rest of the way.
Well, that was done. Got eight more to do. Well, till I run out of clamps, I use quite a bit of clamps on this. One. I might get three or four more done. But I'm going to get those clamped up and then I'll get back with you when it's time to undo them. Well, got five of nine done. Uh, let this dry three or four hours. Sometimes I let them dry overnight, you know. Usually three or four hours, they're good. Um, I don't know if I'm going to turn them on the lathe. So Y'all see me did that, do that in previous videos. I may use a round over a bit. Um, I end up putting them on the lathe too to sand them out. But uh, I'm going to let these dry and then I'll do the other four. And when it's time to round them over and sand them, I'll get back with you. I only got my glue unstopped too. <laughs> It'll probably stop this on me again time I go to use it again. We got nine of them, got them all glued up. Uh, seven eighths of a hole inside diameter. Come on. Time to change bits. I'm going to take this three quarter inch bit off and get this round over a bit on. And what that will do. It will eat that corner off and of course it's spinning around and get it around. I usually work them down on a lathe, but I'm just going to do it on here and show it can be done this way too. There's other ways to do it too. When I first started out, I had a, a handheld sander, Black & Decker. I turned it upside down and then stuck it in a place where it wouldn't move and I, Worked them all like this until they was around. I think I burned up three of them like that. <laughs> three of those days. Till I, I got a, a wood lathe. I could turn them down and a router too. I could turn down if I wanted to on this. But I'm going to get this changed and I'll get back with you when we start rounding them over.
not too bad but as you can see still needs just a little bit of sand and i'll put it on the wood lathe and take care of this really quick this little bit ain't much but uh, that really that really gets him down fast <clears throat> really gets him down fast now it's just like still a long time sanding <laughs> even on a wood lathe but yeah but take care of all these little deals and but uh I had one that busted out a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, it was this one. You see, they all liable to bust out. It's kind of scary laying your hand on top of this lava bust all the pieces. And like I say, don't do as I do. If you do, it's on you. I'm just telling you, it's, it's anything can happen. Uh, but this here where it busted out, I can just trim that off and still be plenty from here to the sound hole, or here to the track. But uh, yeah, I can get that down quick also. But yeah, that really made a fast work of it. A lot faster than the lathe, and I still gotta put it on the lathe. But this was easy to set up, just to round over a bit. Push it back where you will, where it touches, get the right Height on it. Run them through there. Just be careful. They'll, they'll get back with you when I, I get them on a wood lathe and start sanding on them some. Well, got all these to throw them away here and do a little sanding on. Just knock down some edges. Didn't take a whole lot, but uh, I'll get set up to do that. I've got another video working on. <laughs> Has to do with a big old piece of oak <laughs> I've not been able to get down yet. I don't have nothing. My bandsaw is not capable of getting it down. It's like, I think it's 11 or 12 inches by about 7 or 8 inches, something like that, uh, thick. But uh, working on that, and as soon as I get done, get that figured out, I can make the video about the mallets. I really want to get started on them. But uh, I'm going to get set up and get y'all set up where you can see me do a little sanding and getting this down the way it needs to be. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, I've got this side tightened down just so much. I don't want to crack this. It's been cedar. It's kind of soft anyway, but it got to got to get snug down there and see some of this end i may cut off you know if I, if i got enough if i've got plenty oh, i'll keep so much but uh now this end i can go all the way to the end and get it and it's going to be the end of the flute that's got the the bird and all that and you, you blow in this end and all that but i can get it all down good here and I've only got this so tight, too, because you don't want to push it in here too hard. And this here, I've got a lot of tape, painter's tape wrapped around the thing that goes inside here so it fit, wouldn't wiggle too much. But, uh, and I've only got that. I don't have it pressed hard in there. It's just in there, just in there pretty good, you know, but uh, not forced at all. The lights going. See what I'm doing? This camera right in front of me.
Let me get back at this. See what we got now. It's getting on down there. I may have put a good piece of sandpaper on it to get it down. Make sure this ain't too loose. get a piece here this will take her down pretty quick Vibrate a little bit, I better 
Boy, I really got her down pretty quick. I got just a little bit over here. A little bit of a seam. Just a little bit in here. Down here is almost done. A little bit there. Hit this once. Just to be on the safe side, I like to put a little tape on this end. Now, hopefully everything hangs together. Fine stuff. Two twenty. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Just a minute. <laughs>
wobbling on me. Looking for my rag. Let's see. I usually have a shirt down here I use on this. What I did with everything. There's some gloves. I guess I use that for now. See the shine start to come in there. take this off I don't wanna kinda of dangerous doing it like that. See the shine in her, and that's gonna be a beautiful fruit. If it's seen the way it looks, of course, you see some sound holes here. And see, I make mine extra long, so this little part at the end I can just cut off because I've got about this much extra anyway. Because it's the way I make my flutes. Because my real sound hole bit about right in here somewhere. So I've got this to play with there. But this one is done. Just have to get the rest of them done. And the uh, next thing I'll do is put them on the Forstner bit. And uh, get this down flat. My track area. Where my bird sits. Get it down flat. Then I'll burn my holes and. But we'll save that for other videos. This video has already gotten pretty long. But, um, and I'd like to get on some other videos too, especially the mallets, pretty soon. But, uh, next video will probably be, see the Forstner bit on these, me getting them down, and, and then it'll be tuning after that. And see, even though I, once I get them done too, I still put, I oil these twice inside and out and then I wax them once at the very end you talk about slick they are slick enough now but you can see how pretty that that wood is there and other places like that 
This one's got them all over the place. That's really neat right there. Yeah, this one be something else. But uh, I'll finish this for now. And, uh, thank you for watching. And please, if you you would hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe. It helps out greatly. And I thank you. We'll see you a little further around the mountain.